And going forward from this, like one of the big misconceptions that we have today, and like this is absolutely terrible, this, uh, this, um, like the, the implication of this misunderstanding, the idea of like green capitalism, which you hear about a lot these days. So this is like the emergence of private companies dedicated to producing, say, solar panels, uh, wind turbines, low emission vehicles, appliances, and similar products. And that has led some to believe that the profit motive can solve, somehow solve the present environmental crisis without undergoing, the, you know, the world undergoing systemic change or revolution. Needless to say, I think this is a fraud. You know, like I, I, I've more or less said before, profit accumulation demands exclusive control. You know, whether that's over information or whether that's over the technology or anything like that. And no one, or energy sources, and no one can have exclusive control over things like, say, the sun or the tides or the wind or, um, or geothermal energy or any of these things, these energy sources, these limitless energy, energy sources, basically, that are talking, being talked about now as, um, as perhaps being the basis for a new, um, energy system, green, environmentally friendly energy system in the world. So, while you have like some small companies, you know, that claim to be green capitalists doing very well installing, say, solar panels in homes and businesses and, um, and, and various uh, and things like that. But you see the big energy companies, you know, big business, not the little guys, you know, the big energy companies, they're not interested in that. And no wide scale change is possible within the capitalist system because basically there is no profit for, say, someone like, I don't know, Exxon Mobil or Shell in tapping the limitless energy sources like the sun. They're into controlling oil wells and like natural gas sources and these things, these finite resources, fossil fuels, that they can control and make big bucks out of. That's what they're into. And they're not going to change that. And like there's, there's nothing new about like technology, these new clean, environmentally friendly technologies being rejected by a capitalist system that basically that has that puts priority on profit over human well-being like there's nothing new about that i mean um the capitalist system always claims that it's uh you know capitalists always claim that they're all about innovation but if you look, go back to 1900 and nikola tesla's uh you know he was a croatian born um scientist who went to the united states and uh he uh his whole thing, his whole life project was to develop a way of drawing limitless electricity from the Earth's atmosphere. And he was successful in doing that. I mean, he actually ran ex- successful experiments in how to, you know, tap that energy, uh, which we see, you know, which is all there all the time. I mean, the sky is a very electric place. Um, and, uh, you know, that was in 1900. And, you know, he found a way of actually, you know, drawing that kind of, all that electricity, tapping into that limitless electricity supply in the atmosphere. And But the capitalists of that time who were fixated on oil production and oil and making big bucks off oil, like they most, mostly are today, uh, had no interest in that. So nobody actually embraced that technology. And that could have been a game changer right there. Changed the course of history right there. And you see, similarly, in modern, modern times, like in the 1990s, they, they actually built a viable electric car on a battery that lasts a lifetime. You know, it needed virtually no maintenance. It could, you know, you could just plug it into a wall socket and it would recharge. It had a long operating range. It, uh, it moved out around, like, pretty fast. It was really safe. And it was just people who got to drive it loved it. But yet the Ford company realized, the Ford Motor Company realized it could not make a profit off of this. Precisely because it was too efficient. It was too efficient, too environmentally friendly. Didn't need gas, you know. Didn't need major maintenance. You didn't need to replace it like every five or ten years. You know. Like you have to with a gas guzzling car. You know, so it's like it just wasn't profitable for them. So they rejected that technology. And there's nothing new there either. In you know you ha- in the beginning of the ni- uh, the uh, the beginning of the twentieth century you had entire American cities where public transit people's pro- public transit needs were served by electric rail and electric tram sur- systems and but they starting in the nineteen twenties those systems that were like zero emission were bought up and dismantled by oil and auto companies um, 
so that they, they could then quote unquote put America on wheels, you know, allowing these companies to reap gigantic profits. And uh, of course, the what's the result of that today? Anywhere between twenty and hundred thousand people in the United States die every year due to air pollution. That's due to estimates by the Perry Institute and various other institutes that investigate these things. So the consequences are very, very dire. And yet that's what happened. So you see, the capitalist system is not about innovation. It's only about innovation if it serves their bottom line. If that innovation, for whatever reason, does not serve their bottom line, as in the case of the electric car, or converting entirely to solar energy or wind energy or tidal power or geothermal electricity, which we all know all about how to do. Feasibility is not a problem. We, we've, we were getting into that stuff as early as the 1960s. That kind of technology. We know how to tap geothermal energy. We know how to get energy from the sun. We know how to get energy from the wind. We know how to get electri- electricity from the atmosphere. We know how to do all these things and more. But it's not profitable for these big companies to be doing things like that. Thus, they reject that technology. You know, just like they oppose open source technology for, like, say, Mozilla Firefox or Linux or something like that. Because they can't make a profit off of it. Even though the Linux system powers, like, 90% of the supercomputers in the world. (laughs) You know, it's only on, like, 4% of the personal computers because, you know... Apple and Microsoft and companies like that, of course, don't want to uh, have to compete with that because <laughs> they want to make a blo- make big bucks. So that stuff's very important to understand. And it's very important to understand why green capitalism is not solution. Capitalism cannot solve this problem that it itself created. There's no way. Like, when the polluters themselves are in the driver's seat, like, we're in trouble. 